Right, so what Mick's done first, uh, there's there's the back of Mick. You haven't seen it. It is, Doctor. Morning. Oh, no, I really, I do exist. He, he does exist, Doctor. He's had a bad back. No, no. And there, there, cream wouldn't work, would it, no. for this? No. no. So, all we've done first is we've we've blocked out that void now because what we're doing is, if I just cut down here, we want to finish the fascia to the side of the kneeler. Now, when I go, if you've seen it on previous footage, you will see, let me just see if I can see it from down here. You will see, let me see if I can zoom in very well. What you'll see sort of there is the existing fascia goes against the tile kneeler. Let me come back out. I'll show you in a minute anyway. It goes against the tile kneeler. So we want to try and mimic that if we can on this corner. So we filled that wall with some timber. What Mick's doing now is, he's going to start fitting the, um, excuse the noise, someone's working next door. We're now going to start fitting the starter trim, which will then take the vented soffit board. So we'll crack on with that, but you're gonna have to excuse the footage because we're having to do this before the scaffold comes down because we're just waiting for certain things to turn up now, like lead and bedoxes and things. So the scaffold would come down out of our way, but there we are. So I shall film it from underneath and try and get as much um, interesting footage as I can, which at the minute is looking pretty doubtful. Right, let's crack on. You can see the starter trim at the back there now. So in, if I get my finger there, so that's been screwed up to these these blocks I put on, if you remember. I put these blocks on, on the side of every rafter. And then what you do is, I'll go in a minute and show you. Then you get your soffit, you clip it into your starter trim. Mix down there now, just fixing some screws up into up into here, into the so it gets covered then by the um, hockey stick of the, when the, the fascia goes on, it goes in and clips up in, in, inside it. Just so it's difficult to really show you. So there, the ho the hockey stick of the the fascia goes up under there now and clips clips is tight. So every so often we put some screws and stop it falling out. So if I go and you see mix just stop stopping the screws in. If I go underneath now and show you where we are. So that's other than a little bit of a wipe because it's a bit mucky. That's on there now. All the way across, clip that in. We've decided to do a box end over there, which again you can't see, but all it basically means is a little bit of a drawing like that, like mixed on there. So we've got the barge comes down like that, like that, and then it comes down to there. And this part, as you look at it from there, you then have to make up a bit of a, I've cut the barge off like that. And then we've got a piece of this, this, two, uh, this nine inch, and we've gone a cutter piece like that, and we'll cut the top off it, and then we'll put a corner piece on there to cover that in, cover this corner in. But normally what you can buy is a piece of this that come in two metre lengths or something, and it's got a double, about 600 wide, is it normally? They'll, they'll normally, because it's such a big piece, they'll normally cut you a, a metre off. Instead of buying a whole board, it's like a double ended uh, board, isn't it? In effect, how, what, how much are they? 600 wide or something, are they? Width wise, those box ends. Uh, you can get them up to seven, I think 750 is about the biggest. Is so, what, what it is, one? is a piece of this board, and we can't remember what the widths are, but it's a piece of this that's continuous and it's got like a double a double end on it, which means you can you can trim it to suit your bird box by doing that. And because it's already wide, it goes all the way to that, and you cut it at an angle and come back down again. That's what you use it for, and you can obviously turn it around and use both ends in, so you get one piece. But Mick seems to think, generally, where he gets this from, you can buy a metre length or something, because it's it's a lot of money. The whole five metre length. Yeah. Because it's so expensive, most people will sell you a metre. Sell you a metre, so. That's what you normally use, but because this is such a small barge and small fascia, we can use a piece of this off cut. We're going to crack on and put the fascia on and uh, and then we'll show you how we uh, join everything. In fact, what I will point out is the way we've joined our soffit. It's there. I think you can see it very well. And all we do is get a bit of the starter trim and we just, and we just cut it back to back. Preferably buy H. Yeah, you can buy H trim, yeah. You can buy a trim like that. But we're buying a five metre length for that scenario. And yes, if we could think we could store it safely, then we'd probably buy it, but it's the sort of thing that gets damaged. So all we do is buy the proper glue activator, this stuff. It's like Mitre Bond, but it's all plastic. Um, and you just cut two pieces and you glue them together 
and then slot it in so it's height trim yourself rather than buying the actual height trim which is less expensive what we're doing now is just a bit of a bit of a tip really went to getting your um find out where your pins are going to go for your fascia uh, we're making a bit of a rod so we'll just get a piece of timber we'll hold it on there like that all the way along and then go forward into the timber and we'll mark a center on this where all our rafters are and what we can do then is we can then transfer this down to there onto the bench where we've got the uh, fascia ready to go down there then i've got my little white uh, little white milwaukee marker pen like a tipex pen and i could put tiny dots on about 60 or 70 mil up using the old square to mark each center so when we get it up here because it's quite awkward we can just put the pins in on the bench down there ready come up here push it up tight to the soffit not the pinning and we know that they're going to hit the timber every time uh, all we do normally is we normally put a pin at the bottom like i say 60 or so mil up and then the top bit we don't pin because you can guarantee it always hits the gutter doesn't it you can guarantee it hit the gutter bracket every time so all we do then is we use a coarse thread drywall screw at the top when we put the um the gutter bracket in and we go through at the same mark above the pin and we go through it into the timber with like a two inch coarse thread um, drywall screw for the gutter bracket and that holds the top of the fascia so i'll set that up how we're going to do it and then i'll show you exactly what i mean transferring the marks onto there so we've got our rod all marked as you can see i know orientated this is correct so if, let me stand this way so this is correct from that right hand side and all it's doing now is we've got 60 mil set on the square Go along and pick in one of these, because this is every single one that I've marked on there. So we've got an idea of roughly trying to get these evenly spaced. So we just leave that sat on there like that. We could go all the way along, picking up the marks that we've already done. Put the dot on. Oh, we missed one there. I can go and measure that one. And, and then um, we can put the pins in, lift it into place. I can hold it from underneath, not the pins in. It's that simple. All we've done then is, because we've only got this length of timber, all we've done then is, is we can flip this over. I've numbered this number two. Take it towards Mick now. And then find our last one, which is where we know we finished on that end. Pick that up like that. Get the mark on there and carry on again. And go all the way through, picking up our marks. And that's it. Go ahead then. Got our white dots, you can just about see. And we go ahead then. Tack all of our, remove your plastic first, obviously, because there's no spot leaving plastic on, because it's a pain to get off after. Plus, if you leave it on, it tends to get really sticky and marks all the face of your uh, face you board. So take it off at the start. Just be careful, that's all, just be careful with it. So we do that all the way along, get our starts, and then we go up there and pin it in place. So our face is all on, using our rod, as I said, and we've done the box end on there, which we think looks quite nice, quite tidy which is just your barge comes down and you put a bit of a, pit, a timber in there, a uh, bit of plastic in there, put a couple of corners on and then put the corner on there. All you do with this one is you, and I'll go over to the bench and I can show you better. We've got another corner there, Mick. What you do, or well, Mick can show you what you do. This is what you do with that to make it look tidy. So. Okay. Imagine that's a single and that one's gone. As you offer it up, because your barge board's coming down here and your box is there, what you need to do is basically cut the back out of there so that this is essentially a joint cover. Yeah. But as it as it emerges, because at the bottom of the barge board only comes down to there, yeah. and then your box goes like that. So you need to mark all, that first. All this you? is for is just that bit, so you don't see any of the edge. And then you say you cut this so, off, so that inside you piece. It's like you've got a, a joint cover which emerges into a corner yeah. just on that bottom piece there. And then that sits flat on the joint between the and barge that, and the box there. piece. So that's flat. So that's it then? Down to there, and that wraps around the piece that you can see, that little bit at the bottom there. And we think that was quite nice. Nice one. Please with that mimic. It's come out well, you are, because you did it. It looks nice. It's come out nice and square. And the, 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 the worry is, or not the worry, but the crap part is you can't even see. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> So if I just quickly jump on the scaffold, you can see that that is all on, all pinned, black pinned. We've just got to put the joint cover over there now, which I'll put on once I find them. We've got to put a return piece over there, down the side of the kneeler, and put the corner on so it looks the same detail as 
that up there where the fascia goes against the kneeler. So when we've done black to try and make sure we match that, black and white, black and white. So we'll do that then and then the fascia is finished and then we're going to move on to the downpipe over there. <laughs> Good morning Michael. Good morning. Put your silly hat on then so they can see it. Lovely. We can crack on now can't we? So this is said man I'll cover and at the minute it's got the um it's got the rings on it the the height rings on it and we just dropped the last one on and left it like that but as you can see a bit of a trip hazard and now we've got to bring all our tools through here and we're moving into there uh we're just going to sort it out and we've got some uh sand left and we're just going to put that round here tied up a little bit move all this again it's just bits that we've got to do so we'll crack on and do that i ain't going to film it because it ain't interesting is it and then we'll uh, move into here, which is where we're going to fit the... There's a boiler flue at the moment, and that other side there is going to be a downstairs toilet. The boiler is going there. So what we'll do is we'll fix a piece of 12 mil ply onto that wall, up to the wall plate height, because there's a flat roof going in that part there, which is, if you haven't already guessed, or realised from other footage, there's a wall coming across here to about there, into this reveal I think we're going to do it, plasterboard, all the way across, and goes to there that's going to be accessing to the utility there's a doorway going in there that'll be into the utility there there'll be a wall in there utility that side walk through from the front door into the kitchen this will all be the kitchen so the boilers going there we're going to plywood then plasterboard then we can mount the boiler underfloor heating manifold is going under the boiler underfloor heating all in here right then bit of an update for you and what we're doing so let's crack on and do something. We've now fixed a bit of ply on the wall there. It's got a bit damp with it, forgot to bring it inside, but so we'll let that dry out before we plasterboard it. We've just been talking about a plan with regards to what we're gonna do in there. So I'll discuss that in a future episode, what we're gonna do. But we're gonna move now onto the lead work. So what we're gonna do is, in fact, I'll tell you what though, let me say something about materials. Look at the state of that lead. We've bought that brand new, unroll it. Look at the state of it. Same what are we supposed to do with that now? Both sides. Yeah, shocking, absolutely shocking. We've got to try and clean that now. So we can put it up there, brand new. It doesn't look dog toffee. Anyway, what we're going to do, um, cut it into one and a half metre lengths. Let me come back. One and a half metre lengths. Form, get a piece of 25 mil that. Form a 25 mil lip on there, which is what goes into the cut that I did. And then we'll dress this down the wall and onto the roof. Once we've put the, um, the roll of abutment uh, kit on there, for the ventilation which if i try and show you is in here let me get it let me get it let me get it here it is so this is what goes on an abutment roof this stuff goes on top of the the last tile up there now sits on top of it and then the lead sits on top of that and what it does is it gives you because of the little nipples there top and bottom it gives you a standoff so the airflow can go under the lead and go down the back and what it is it holds on with these little copper um, clips here, goes over the top of the tile and then clips up underneath there. And so we've cut these into one and a half metre lengths now. And what I didn't say was when we put them up there, they've got to be overlapped minimum of 150 mil. That one will overlap, that one 150 mil. But what we will do is we'll put that one on first and overlap that one on top of that one. So when you look from here, you don't see the overlap because you're never going to see it this way. Anyway, what we've done then, 20, 25 mil lath, which is the thickest you need to go into your cut because that's 25 mil deep up there. And then we've just used that then. And me and Mick have then just turned this over, gradually, bit by bit, turned it over. And then I've got my lead dresser and then just tapped it flat. So that'll just get taken up onto the, uh, onto the roof like that now. We'll put it into the hole and we'll dress it down the wall. Once we've put the tiles on and once we've put the abutment ventilation on. So I think what we'll do now is we'll do another couple of these, take up onto the roof, put a couple of tiles on and we'll try and sort of show you how this all links together. Your mum might not be looking forward to seeing us on the roof, fitting the lead, the abutment flashing, but the GoPro footage was rubbish. So, yeah, it, it's lead and abutment flashing. There's other videos that arguably are better than mine in terms of fitting it, because it's people that do it every single day. And instead, I'll show you some other footage. We're going to go inside and start moving everything round and putting walls up, taking scenes down and preparing for the sparky. And today, we are moving into inside and we're going to start moving out the existing kitchen 
to then look at breaking through into the extension, but we've got to put a bit of a temporary insulation wall up so we can move the appliances into the extension. So I'll spin you around and I'll show you what we're doing. So all we're doing now, and mainly because of that boiler flue there, we're going to move the kitchen around in a minute. So we're going to move the sink over. We're going to move the appliances, washer, uh, dryer, dishwasher into here. Again, all temporary. Spark is coming tomorrow and we can start insulating the roof as well. And we know there's a flat roof going in here. If you've watched, been paying attention to the chancel channel before. The chancel? Paying attention to the chancel? What's a chancel? Anyway, so, uh, so what we're doing, all we're doing now, we've got this 75 insulation, which we've got for the floor. We're going to put this up as a temporary wall. Now, I'll tell you what, we, we've work, it's worked out nice for us again. Look at that. That's one full sheet. One full sheet, one full sheet. And I got a tiny gap there. That's, that's it. That's beautiful, isn't it? So Michael's going to put that on top of that now. Hopefully. Hopefully. And all we're doing is just some washers and um, screws and temporary uh, pinning it with some patrices on the back. And we'll fill all that in to make sure there's nothing getting into here. Uh, and then we're, we're happy then that when I put the Veloxes in tomorrow as well, because I'm picking them up tonight after work, we can open these up and vent this space. This can remain vented. That door will be out of use and that's sealed. We've already checked that. That's fine. We're happy with that. That'll remain open. That'll remain open with the vents of the Velux, and this will be separate. This again, this is all waiting for the plumber to come and move the boiler onto there. So, like I say, what we're going to do, make sure to put that on there now, and we'll fill that top piece in, and then uh, we'll form a bit of a wall, and then we'll insulate it all in. So that's what we, I think he's going to need a hand. Is he going to do it? Oh, hang on, let's have a look. This might be comical. Is he going to do it on his own? I think he is. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, of course he has. Of course he has. Of course he's done it on his own. He doesn't need me. That's worked well. So, yeah, and it's even... It's that top corner. Look at that. It's even gone lovely. Against that rafter as well. So we're going to brace it there with a bit of timber on the other side of the block work. We'll fill that top piece in. And that's it sealed. Temporary, all temporary, all temporary, all temporary. Right then. We've had to move the appliances out the kitchen and we're going to put them there. We've got the sparker coming in a minute. It's going to hook up some temporary power, which we've got a few spur there, which we can do that with. That's great. Temporary power for there, for these. And then we've got to get some water from the sink area. So we've started taking the dishwasher's gone from there. I've cut the worktop off. Move that out there. Not the best of light, sorry about that. And then we've got to... We're going to mix out a good idea, taking the whole sink unit off, the top off. We're going to take it out, move it across, and the wall is then going to come from here, from this point, all the way across, doorway, and then a wall that finishes there. Doorway there into the kitchen, doorway there, which is going to be the new um, toilet area, toilet and basin, cloakroom toilet if you like. And then here, it's going to be, the, it's going to be a wall here as well, because we're going to have a cupboard from the other side. That's what we're doing. Like I say, it isn't something that uh, putting stuff back, it's more adapting what we've got for now to allow use of some kind of kitchen still while we're doing in there. So we're gonna get this, move it over, and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. But it evolves, taking this kitchen ceiling down, finish the insulation off. And if you haven't seen the uh, bathroom um, series where me and uh, Michael over there did all the bathroom, then you can see that. This is what you're looking for on our channel now. And then we put the insulation, we're going to put the insulation here and then reboard all this tomorrow uh, after the spark has been. Could be in a minute, tell us what he wants, what he wants where, and then we can crack on. Right then, let's get this shifted. So as you can see, we started getting our socket runs in. When the cables are going all the way out there, across there, down to there, and then across and all the way through to the board, which I'll show you in a minute. So doing that, I'm just setting out for his outside lights. So we're having one outside light here, or should I say it's going to be um, the PIR, um, yeah, floodlights, security lights. We're going to have one in the centre of there, one in the centre of there. Outside socket there. Charlie's now pulling the uh, cabling in for the appliances that are going in the kitchen, which is fridge freezer at that end, uh, tall, oven tall, tall oven housing, and then the harbour and then sign, and then it comes round the corner and goes to there. Say good morning, Charles. Good morning. Morning to the fans. So, your fans, that is, not ours. So, if we're moving to the kitchen, I'll show you what we did yesterday. So, let me just move my scaffold out the way. So, all we did was, 
We just got this cupboard, took everything out, moved the dishwasher and moved it all over that way. The appliances are out there, you haven't already seen them. They're all set up out there, so we've done a bit of a temporary feed, strap on boss into our stack and then we'll cap that off and then this will be boxed in. Temporary water feed going through the wall there. So this is what we did. Um, just run some temporary feeds up and over there, down there, connected to this, connect the waste to the wall. That's what we've done. So my job today, take the ceiling down, get ready for the sparkies. As you can see, they're pulling cables through to go to the board because the board is in there. So we're going to pull the cables through to get them to the board. I'll get this down so I'm ready on Monday, because today's Friday, we can start setting out the lights in here, which is spotlights. Just up first. Just shoots. That's ready for the spark. Started pulling his cables through, through there. Um, he's pulled all of his cables there, which is the six mils and what before the hob and the oven. They're all in. Got the feed for the extractor and feed for the um, fridge as well. That's going there because there's a double oven. Let me come back. Tall fridge freezer there, then a double oven there. Then the hob, cupboards, corner, sink, dishwasher. I think I've already said this. If I have, my apologies for repeating myself. So he's pulled his uh, switching in. There's more to do in there because this, this corridor and in the kitchen is a separate to this because this is a new kitchen and diner on the side of there. Um, this would be one circuit. And then this and in there would be another circuit. So we've got the external socket, which is that. Switching for here and over there, but we haven't got any three core on site, so he's going to pick that up. Three core on earth for the double switching. That's um, a socket above the worktop. And then we start to do things like drilling holes for outside lights. There's one going there, there's one going there, and then there is one going around the corner, which is going to be floodlight, Char. Floodlight, yeah. Around the corner, that's just up and up and up and downy things, isn't it? We think. Depends how posh you want to go, doesn't it, Char? Um, and that's it for today. Um, the only thing we are going to do now, I'll say that's it for today, it's not, but this is for filming because we don't know what else to film. But what we are going to do <coughs> is we're going to remove this cupboard. We're going to pull this into there, take that cupboard up, move this this way, cut the worktop back so we've got space for our wall to go in here, ready for Monday. So all the mess in here is done, so we can clean up today and there's no more mess as such on Monday. Trying to limit the mess to one day. That's the plan. That's what we're going to do. Finish it off doing that. And then we'll have a, have a good tidy up. Make sure we've got everything ready for Monday. So, uh, are you going to say Tramic? Tramic. So, thank you for watching the episode. Not much done. And I apologise. Not the most exciting episodes. But we try to show you everything we're doing in the order that we're doing it. So it may be that this isn't the end. If it isn't the end, then carry on watching. But if it is, whatever you're doing, have a good one. And we'll see you next time.